we lay aside every single care, O oh Lord, that is not of your will for us to carry, O oh God. We give it to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we release your perfect will today. We release your plan and your purpose for today, O oh Lord. We release your kingdom to be established today. We release your reign, O oh Lord, to be established. He alabardi alabardi andar do boko. He alamandor do bo she alamaha city. He alamandor do bo kordi andar alamaha. He alamandor do bo shandar di alamaha ye. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. He alamando, we bring every thought under subjection to the knowledge of God. We bring, O oh Lord, every thought that is not of you, O oh Lord. We bring it captive, O oh Lord. We take dominion and authority over everything, every false imagination in our mind. We bring it down, O oh Lord. We cast down imaginations today. We cast down, O oh Lord, imaginations, false images of ourself, O oh Lord, from the past. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We bind every thought, O oh Lord, that is not of you. We bind every thought that does not come from the knowledge of God. We take dominion and authority over it in the name of Jesus. Alamandor do boko to yala mahaye, hi alamandor do bo shanda yala labardi andaye. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hi ala labardi ala labardi andar do boko. There is Holy Ghost power in this place. Ye yara mandor do bo she. We cast every care, we cast every worry, O Lord. Lord, we cast every thought of doubt. We bind every thought of worry, O Lord. We take dominion and authority over every spirit of doubt, every spirit of worry, every spirit of anxiety. In the name of Jesus, O Lord, we bring it captive, O Lord. I bind every hindrance, God, that keeps your people from gathering, that keeps your people from knowing you more, that keeps your people from growing and in grace, in the knowledge, O oh Lord, of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I cut, O oh Lord, the source off of everything that keeps us from knowing you more, that keeps us from growing, that keeps us from gathering together as a body. In the name of Jesus, we bind every spirit of blindness off of the oh Lord this area oh God off of these people O oh Lord in this city that he keeps them captive we command them to be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ we lose your perfect will to be done we lose oh lord your will to be done i release your angelic ministry today father in the name of jesus i release your authority upon your body in the name of jesus let your will be done, Father. Here the man door do bo koshe, here the mahataye la mahaye. 
Lord, I lose signs, miracles, and wonders to follow them that believe. I lose your perfect will to be done, Father. I lose a spirit of faith, oh God, in this place to be felt. I lose the spirit of faith upon us. I release, oh Lord, oh God, your faith in this place. I release your faith, oh Lord, to be in operation in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ, for Father, we did not come, O oh Lord, to experience the ordinary. We did not come, O oh Lord, just to see a normal thing happen. But Lord, we know that you are a supernatural God. That you are more than able, O oh Lord. God, I didn't come here, O oh Lord, satisfied. But I came here, O oh Lord, oh God, with a divine discontent that says I need you. That says I want more of you. That says I want to know more about you. Lord, oh God, I lose a spirit of hunger and a spirit of thirst upon your body that it would cause us to be filled, oh Lord, that it would cause us to hunger and thirst after you, oh Lord, that it would cause us, oh Lord, to not be satisfied with the normal and the usual and the mundane. But Lord, that prayer is stirring upon us that we would not be satisfied with where we're at, that we would not be satisfied with being normal oh Lord but God that we would go out and preach the gospel outside of the four walls Lord that we would be a light oh Lord everywhere we go Lord in the name of Jesus Christ loose a spirit of a soul winner upon us that we would not be satisfied that we would not be satisfied with a little that we would not be satisfied with just the usual Lord but Lord we would begin to hunger and thirst after you O oh God Lord Lord, in the name of Jesus, come on, it is God's will for you to pray until there is a breakthrough. It is the will of the Lord for you to pray till something supernatural happens. It is not of the will of the Lord for you to pray and you not prevail. It is the will of God for you to conquer every time you step into the flow of the Holy Ghost. It is the will of God for when you pray, chains break. It is the will of God for there to be a breakthrough when you begin to open up your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord I lose a submission oh Lord I lose a submission to authority today we submit oh Lord to your authority today we submit to your will today we submit to the man of God today we submit to your power today we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God in the name of Jesus that in due season oh Lord you shall elevate us but Father, we humble ourselves first. He ala la la bar di andar do bo kor di andar la ba ha. He ala bar di ala bar di andar do bo ko se. He ala la la andar do bo shanda la 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 ba ha. He ala man do do bo kor di andar la ma handa ye. He ala la bar di ala bar di andar da ba ha. He ala la la bar di ala la bar di andar do bo ko. Come on, it's not the will of the Lord for us to be satisfied. It's not the will of the Lord for us just to breeze through this service. We need a divine move of the Holy Ghost. We need a visitation from the Lord. We need a flow from start to finish. It's not the will of God that you leave here the same. It's not the will of God that you leave here with a cycle it is the will of God that you leave transformed it is the will of God that you leave equipped it is the will of God you leave new 
Come on, let that be your desire right now. I want to be made new. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Some of you have burdens that you need to cast. Would you just begin to do that right now? Some of you have things you need to forgive. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. It's not the will of God for you to be the same. It's not the will of God for you to leave unchanged. Come on, God is trying to get us somewhere right now. He wants to end our cycles. He wants to end the way we just breeze through life. He wants to end just survival. And He wants us to begin to thrive in His presence. Come on, it's not the will of God for you to barely make it through the week. It's the will of God for you to live in the spirit and begin to grow like never before. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. Come on, let's tap into the flow of the Holy Ghost. Come on, God is wanting to do something that he's never done in this place before. God is wanting to speak and move in a way he has never moved and spoken in before. God wants to do greater than in the book of Acts today. God wants to do greater. He wants to do greater. He Come on, that's it. There's a flow of the Holy Ghost that is in this place. Would you just begin to tap in right now? Come on, the Bible says greater things. It says greater things. Greater things than these shall ye do. Greater things than these shall you see. Come on, it's not just supposed to be the same every week. It's supposed to be greater. We're supposed to grow. We're supposed to see greater. Come on, God has greater things for you. God has greater things for you. It's not the will of the Lord for you to leave the same. It's the will of the Lord for you to see greater. It's the will of the Lord for you to grow. It's the will of the Lord for you to know more about the Lord. It's not the will of the Lord for you to be same. It's not the will of the Lord for you to stay the same way. Come on, in the name of Jesus, in this moment, can we just begin to pray right now? I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to try to drive you to this, but the Holy Ghost is going to do a work right now. Let the Holy Ghost begin to prompt you. Let the Holy Ghost begin to lead you right now. Come 
Come on, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is the river. This is the living water. This is what quenches your thirst. This is what causes you to never be the same. This is what causes you to be different from the world. This is what causes you to be transformed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, there is an urgency to pray right now. There is a deep call that God is giving for his body to begin to pray, for his body to begin to function. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, God can only do so much if we don't pray. God can only move so much if we don't pray. He can only do so much if we don't pray. But when we begin to pray, He can do the unexplainable. But when we begin to pray, that's when the miraculous happens. When we begin to pray, doors begin to open. When we begin to pray, blinded eyes begin to be open when we begin to pray the baptistry has always been filled when we begin to pray these altars are no longer empty it's only when the church prays when God can do something supernatural it's only when his body is operating is when God can do something powerful come on can we begin to do that right now would you just begin to pray in the spirit right now apart every lie of the enemy that keeps us captive that keeps us in a stronghold that keeps us a Lord captive Come on, there needs to be strongholds broken. There needs to be strongholds broken in this place. Come on, this needs to happen. This needs to happen. God wants to do this. We just need to be available. Come on, we just need to be available. God is willing to do it, and he is able and ready, but he needs somebody to do it through. Come on, this is the Holy Ghost. Come on, I'm not doing this. This is what God is doing right now. Come on, God is asking you a question right now. Do you want to leave the same? Do you want to leave the same? Or do you want to be transformed? Do you want to just be the same way like you've always been or for the first time in your life? Do you want to see me visit you? Do you want to see me clean that heart? Do you want to see me transform it like how you've been asking me? Come on, God is in this place. Yeah, 
Come on, as a church, this is our responsibility. We don't just go to church. We are the church. The church prays. The church labors. The church is a witness. The church is a light. Come on. God's mission is not for you just to sit on a pew. God's mission for you is to pray. God's mission for you is to reach the lost. Come on. Come on. God is saying this. You are made for more. You are made for more. You are made to more. You are made more than just to be at church. You are made to be a light. You are made to be a witness. You are made to be a conduit of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on just a little bit further. Would you just push in the spirit a little bit further? In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, God's not done yet. God's not done yet. That's it. Just begin to lift up your voice. That's it, sister. Just begin to lift up your voice. Begin to tap into that level of intercession. That's it, like never before. That's it. Lift up your voice. Come on, there's some things we need to tear down right now. There's some walls and some barriers in the spirit that need to be teared down. For this next few moments, can you just help me pray to tear these walls down, to tear these oppositions down? We take dominion and authority over it now. We command every wall, O Lord, of iniquity, every wall of self-will, every iniquity, O Lord, of your spirit of iniquity, to be broken, O God. Every lie of the enemy, every spirit of deception, we command it to be broken down. Come on. If you don't know what to pray for, just begin to pray in tongues because God is doing something. Yeah, yeah. That you just begin to pray in tongues. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We command these walls to be broken. We command these walls to be broken down. Come on, I feel things breaking in the spirit. Uh, come on, hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Just begin to keep on praying. Keep on breaking that wall. Come on, somebody break through in the spirit. Begin to push in the spirit. It is the will of God for you to pray until there is a breakthrough. It is the will of God for you to pray until there is a release. It is the will of God for you to pray till you are delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I wonder if we could stand to all of our feet right now. If you could just stand to your feet all over this place. And if you are hungry for God to use you, He is going to give you supernatural power and supernatural authority. And if you desire for that, and if you're willing for God to use you, would you just begin to lift up both of your hands towards heaven as high as you can if you want to receive God's authority in this place. And it is going to be released upon you, Father, by the authority of the Word of God and the power power that is in the name of Jesus I release
release your power, your dunamis power upon your people and upon your body to affect, oh Lord, they're where they go, to affect everywhere, oh Lord, that they would have that power. I release your authority upon them in this place, Lord, to be used of the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus Christ, would you receive that authority? Would you shout unto God? Would you worship the Lord with your voice? Would you begin to magnify His name? Hallelujah, Jesus. Would you just clap your hands to the Lord right now? Glory, pour out your 
power and love as we sing holy, holy to see you I lift it up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy holy, holy, holy of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love, as we sing holy, to see you, I lift it up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love, as we sing holy, 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 I lift Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Holy eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Your mercy taught us how to dance To celebrate with all we have And we'll dance to thank you for mercy Your glory taught us how to shout We'll lift your name in all the earth And we'll shout to the praise of your glory it's the overflow of a forgiven soul, and now we see you, God. Our hearts cannot stay silent. We'll be a dancing generation, dancing because of your great mercy, Lord. Your great mercy, Lord. Shouting because of your great glory 
she taught us how to dance To celebrate with all we had And was that to thank you for mercy She only taught us how to shout To lift your name in all the earth And was we'll shout to the praise of your glory it's the overflow of a forgiven soul And now we see you, God Our hearts cannot stay silent It's the overflow of a forgiven soul And now we see you, God Our hearts cannot stay silent Of your great mercy, Lord, your great mercy, Lord, will be a shouting generation, shouting because of your great glory, Lord, your great glory, Lord. It's the overflow of a forgiven soul. And now we see you, God. Our hearts cannot stay silent. Oh, somebody, would you thank Him for the overflow of His mercy? In the name of Jesus, we see you, God. Our hearts cannot stay silent. It's the overflow of our forgiven soul. And now we see. God, our hearts cannot stay silent. We'll be a dancing generation, dancing because of your great mercy, Lord. Your great mercy, Lord. We'll be a shouting generation, shouting because of your great glory, Lord. Your great forgiven soul and now we see you God our hearts cannot stay silent it's the overflow of our forgiven soul and now we see you God our hearts cannot stay silent it's the overflow of our forgiven soul And now we see you, God Our hearts cannot stay silent It's the overflow Of our forgiven soul And now we see you, God Our hearts cannot stay silent Overflow of a forgiven soul And now we see you, God Our hearts cannot stay silent We'll be a dancing generation Dancing because of your great mercy, Lord Your great mercy, Lord We'll be a shouting generation Shouting because of your great glory, Lord Your great glory, Lord We'll be a dancing generation Dancing because of your great mercy, Lord Your great mercy, Lord We'll be a shouting generation Dancing because of your great mercy, Lord 
you lift up your hands to the Lord this morning? Would you begin to worship Him right now? Oh, come on, would you lift up your hands and worship Him? It's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of worship. How great and all will see how great how great is our God. Somebody lift up his name Worthy of our praise And my heart will sing How great is our God Name above all names Oh, 
Somebody shout the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout the name of Jesus. For they that call upon the name of the Lord will be here, heard, will be saved, will have health in Jesus' name. Oh, he kandara la boko How great is Jesus Christ. How great is the Lord Jesus Christ. We worship you in this place, Lord. 
If there's anybody, if there's any doubt who we worship, if there's any doubt who we sing to, if there's any doubt who we worship and give praises to, it is the name of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus and Him alone. We worship Him. We praise Him. He's the name that is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Philippians 2, 9 says, Wherefore also God highly exalted Him and gave unto Him the name which is above every name. Why is that a big deal? Because the power is in the name. Authority is in the name. And it identifies who we worship because of the name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth. That seems like everything. And that every tongue should confess or declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Would you begin to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord? Would you begin to declare that the name of Jesus, that every knee should bow of things in heaven, on things in the earth, and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord? And it glorifies the Spirit of God, the Father, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit that is in us, that Christ in us will begin to be our hope of one day being glorified. Would you thank Him for that hope this morning? That you have that hope. You have that hope of eternal life. You have that hope in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Would you just lift up your hands right now? Would you just talk to Him for a little bit? Just talk to Him right now. Just take some time, amen, to talk to Him. The reason why we worship God. The reason why, oh, He inhabits our praises so He can come close. And when He comes close, He wants to converse. He wants to impart. He wants to bless. He wants us to get to know Him. To have an intimate relationship with Him. Because really that's the only thing that satisfies in this life. Everything else is temporary. Everything else in fact is held by the presence of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So we worship you today Lord. We glorify you this morning oh God. And there's nobody like you. And we declare the greatness of your name. We thank you oh God for every good thing. Every perfect thing comes from you, Father. The Father of lights, the Father of illumination, the Father of impartation. There's no shadow, there's no darkness in Him at all. Every good thing, every perfect gift comes from Him. Would you thank Him this morning? Would you worship Him this morning? Yeah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now as we live life, we could either attribute things that happen or things that don't happen just to circumstances and chance. The good things that happen, we could either say, well, it just kind of happened or... We could receive it from the hand of God. We could attribute it, attribute it to the power and the goodness of God that He has shown to all of us all of our lives. From the time you were born till today, God ha- has had His eye upon you. And He has showered you with His blessings. He has orchestrated your life uh, that you could be in the house of the Lord this morning. He has led your footsteps 
that you could receive the truth of the Word of God. Uh, he has chosen you. He has handpicked you uh, so that truth can be imparted unto you. Uh, and here you are. There's no confusion what the Bible says. Uh, there's no confusion what it takes to get to heaven. How many of you are thankful for that? Uh, how many of you are thankful there's no confusion in you? And that's the greatness of the Lord. That's the greatness of His love for us. And so that scripture says, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So when you look at your life, both good and bad, it came from the Lord. It came from the Lord. Can I challenge you that even the things that you don't like, but if you would just let all things happen, let all things work out for the good, you'll realize even those, you could be thankful for them. Because it brings you to where you're at. It forms you. It fashions you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Would you thank Him for the bad things? Do you have that kind of faith? Would you thank Him for the bad things? Oh, I think it's good for us to read that. That's James chapter 1, verse, starting at verse 16. It says, Be not deceived, my beloved brethren. And so there's a deception that could enter if you don't understand this. James 1, verse 17. Be not led astray, brethren. Be not deceived, verse 16, please. And it leads to verse 17. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. Now we all know what good is, right? That's defined. But we got to have a revelation of what's perfect. Amen? How, how do you get perfection? Peter talks about precious jewels, silver, gold, that is fashioned, made into perfection, and they apply heat so the impurities could come up to the top and it could be scooped, scooped out. And then heat is applied again and more impurities comes up and they'll scoop it out again. And until there's no more and the one that's forming, fashioning can see his reflection, then he says, it's ready. It's perfect. It's complete. It's without sin. It's without impurities. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. Comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness. Good and bad, He allows it. Can you thank Him for that? It's easy to thank God for the good. But can you think about the things that you thought it was bad? But it turned out for the good. In fact, you're here today because most of, most of us, we had a need. And God has brought us to the place of that need. Both good and the perfectness that comes from taking out all the impurities. Hallelujah. That's a revelation from the Lord. I've never seen it quite that way before. And I pray you take that home with you so that when life happens, how many of you realize life happens? Right? Things happen. The Bible says, rain and the sun. God makes his rain to shine and, and, and his, his sun to shine and the rain to come down both on the just and the unjust. God's good. He's good everywhere. He's good all the time. Amen. And, and, and good 
and the not so good, it, can, it comes from the Lord. Would you thank him one more time in the name of Jesus Christ? Come on, would you thank him from the heart? And as you thank him, would you receive revelation that everything comes from him? All things come from him. In the name of Jesus, praise God, praise God. Amen. It's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm so glad that you're here. You came to worship the Lord. And I know God has greater things for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to hand this out to you. These are Power Sunday cards. If you would take one with the intent of giving it to somebody else. We will have our Power Sunday next Sunday, the 27th, the end of the month. And there's going to be a special service. Invite somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you realize God is doing something great in the midst of His people? How many of you realize God is doing something great in your life? That God has manifested and manifesting His, His power in your life. Uh, yesterday, the youth went to the neighborhood in Lake Forest and they baked some cookies and invited people. Amen. In fact, they knock on Lorraine's door, in Jesus' name. And thank God for her. She's here and all of you fine folks. Uh, how many are reaching out to somebody in Jesus' name? You're reaching out to somebody. And we have given out the commitment cards. And how many of you still have that? If you would uh, help us out. And when we take the offering, if you could put it in the offering basket. And we are going, If just take a picture of it on your phone. And what we will do, we will partner with you to teach them the word of the Lord. And to help you and pray for them with you. Amen. Also, there's a lot of great things. Last Saturday, I believe it was, or maybe Thursday, the youth went up to Buena Park, the adopted daughter work that we had, and they were talking to the neighbors and, and witnessing to them and just just being friendly. And the Lord led them led them to a, was it 89-year-old? This 89-year-old gentleman right here. There's actually a video of him, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. In his driveway. Amen. And today he's going to get baptized in Jesus' name at the Buena Park Church. We thank God for that. Uh, uh, Thursday they had a connect group over there. And a longtime friend of the Villarins, uh, uh, Jason Villa is his name. Uh, he was filled with the Holy Ghost in the living room. And I think yesterday he was baptized in Jesus' name. I hope that encourages you in the name of Jesus to get this commitment cards, fill up their names. Amen. We're going to pray for them. We're going to believe God for these commitment cards for the Bible studies. Amen. How many are you going to pray right now? Would you pray right now in the name of Jesus that God would give you grace, that God would give you the names of the people in this commitment cards in the name? Come on, would you pray right now? We're not filling time. Amen. God, give us words, give us names, order our steps, direct us, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. How many are going to reach one person? If each one of us will reach one person, it will glorify your Father. Amen. Amen. And the Power Sunday that's going to happen this end of the month, that will be an opportunity to invite somebody to the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Tomorrow uh, is our RSM Connect group. And those of you that are part of that, uh, be faithful to that. Then Friday, the last Friday of this month, will be our college and career at our house and all those that are younger or younger looking or younger feeling, you are invited in Jesus' name. There's also an opportunity to connect with other youth and they have a skating uh, event this Friday, right? Day? This Saturday in Jesus' name. And so this, this Saturday... Um, I can't read it there, but February 26, 1.30 p.m. It, it'll be at Orange at the Holiday Skate Center. And all of you are invited. In fact, if you feel young and you know how to roller skate, you're more than welcome. 
Amen. Don't, just don't get injured, and if you do, just we'll pray for you. God will heal you in Jesus' name. How many are reaching for somebody to be saved? We have many opportunities for you to do that. There's Bible studies into His marvelous light. There's a place prepared for you. There's a invitation cards, amen, that are uh, in the lobby. And I want to encourage you, get, get a few of these. And every day, some say every day, or maybe you can even start once a week, hand it out. Think about it like a card that uh, expires. If you don't hand it out, it expires in a week. And it will compel you to witness to somebody for the glory of the Lord. Amen and amen. Praise God. Would you take up your phone and... Uh, Before we come and give our offering, there's a scripture in Genesis 4, verse 9. The Lord asks Cain. Genesis 4, verse 9, he asked him, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Would you take out your phone and whoever God lays in your heart, names of people, people that are not here, people perhaps that you've been witnessing to, people that you love, and just text them and tell them that you miss them. Amen. That you're thinking about them and that you love them perhaps. Would you do that? This is your chance to text in church. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And as you send it, would you just begin to believe? And as you send it, would you just begin to thank God? As you send it, would you begin to mix it with faith? And say, Father, as Paul sent, oh God, pieces of clothing, and people were healed, I release healing, Lord, upon these people that I'm reaching for. I release, God, your love that they could sense it and feel it, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yo, Randa, come on, would you pray right now? Would you pray right now in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, there's no excuse for us, oh God. In the age of technology, Lord, it takes just but a few seconds. It doesn't even take a minute, oh Lord. There's no excuse that we cannot be our brothers, our sisters' keeper, oh Lord. And let them know that we love them. Would you thank the Lord right now? Would you just thank God for your prayers? Would you thank Him right now that He has answered your prayers? In Jesus' name. Praise God. Would you stand? We're going to bring our tithe and our offering into the storehouse. If you still have your pledge uh, sheet, amen. I want to encourage you and I want to encourage you to drop it in the offering plate so we will know. I'm believing that God is going to help us through you, through all of us, blessing you to pay off this building. How many you have that kind of faith? Amen. amen. I believe that in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your people. Lord, for the miracle, the ongoing miracle, God, of financial blessing upon the lighthouse. How many are thankful that you are blessed and you know that your blessings come from the Lord and that he has made it possible for you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you come? Would you give right now as God lays in your heart the amount to offer unto him a sacrifice? If you want to give electronically, Brother Jim here can help you. In Jesus' name, on my left to your right. In the name of Jesus. And let it be a blessing to you. Praise God. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Yeah, and Lord, send the revival. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I will keep praying. I will keep praying. I will keep fasting. Until it comes, send it to every nation. 
I'll keep believing. I'll keep interceding until. Would you worship Him, giving His part of worship? Giving His part of worship. Lord, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Oh, pour it out, God. Pour it out, God. We're ready. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Ye kanda la basata. In the name of the Lord. Out, God. In the name of the Lord. Pour In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it yes. Out, In the name of Jesus. Pour it out, In the name of Jesus. We're ready. Lord. We're ready. Lord. Pour la bakasata. I mean, believing for a harvest. I mean, believe God has called you for a harvest. Perhaps some of you don't have this yet. If you don't have this, Alex, could you help me hand this out? These are our commitment Bible study cards. Would you lift up your hands if you need one of these? In Jesus' name. And we're going to help pray together. Fill it up. Drop it into the altar here before you leave today. In Jesus' name. And I believe God is going to do great things. So far, the goal that God has given us to teach 100 Bible studies, we have taught 22 Bible studies so far. Would you thank God for that? <laughs> Amen. How many believe, will believe that God's going to use you to teach His Word? Praise God. We want to welcome all of you. Good to see Sister Gemma. Amen. Back in the house of the Lord. And you miss you, Sister Gemma. You're always welcome here. Your family, your friends. Let them know they are always welcome at the lighthouse. In Jesus' name. Uh, good to see Daniel Lopez. Amen. In the house of God. and From uh, Camp Pendleton. Amen. Good to see Nick as well. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word of the Lord today? How many have come expecting to receive a word from God? Not from me, from the Lord. My words, they're just going to be words. But if God's going to be speaking and God always uses a person, it's going to bless you because it will be eternal. It will bless you because it's going to be truth. And we're going to read that from the word of the Lord. You know, in life, you always got to look ahead. Some say look ahead. You can't look back, right? In your car, there's a reason why your windshield is bigger than your rearview mirror. And that really is the direction in life. You got to keep looking ahead. In fact, where you're looking, that's where you're going to arrive. Where you're looking and constantly thinking, that will be your destination. Amen? It's the same as driving. Wherever you look at, that's your direction. And God is the one that is writing the story of your life. Hebrews 12 verse 2, looking unto Jesus. It's important who and what you're looking at. What you're looking at either becomes magnified, it be, either, become, either consumes all of your thoughts and your, your life and influences everything about you because the eye is the window to your soul. In fact, I want to encourage you to do this as you talk to people with your friends and converse with them. Look at their eyes. And if you get the Holy Ghost, God will give you some discernment to know what they're going through. So that then it's no longer just a download of an exchange of verbal useless information. It becomes a ministry. It blesses them. Even just a few seconds of being around you, they're going to go, wow, that, that was different. 
I felt something there. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Even going to the grocery or the drive through getting your coffee, and you look them in the eye, and, and you say something that God wants them to hear. Perhaps it is as simple as, have a great morning, and you mean it. And there's power behind it. Have a great morning. Hallelujah. How many of you feel that right now? That word right there, that phrase that is anointed by the Holy Ghost. Have a great day. Today is the day. It will be a great day. How many of you believe that? It will be a great day. Amen. Come on, some of you need to wake up. How many of you believe it will be a great day? What you say matters. What you think, what you look at matters. What you do matters. And so Paul, the Apostle Paul, encourages us to look or looking into Jesus. He is the, the author. You're not writing your life. You're not the author of your life. Right? Most of you believe that. If you don't believe that, just look back on the things that you thought you were going to do and accomplish and be. Be all you can be in the army. Where are you at today? Huh? Where are you at? Did it all plan out, work out as you wanted because you're the author? You're not the author. You know who he is? It's Jesus. If you want him to be. Amen. How many of you want him to keep writing the story of your life? How many of you want that for yourself? Uh, oh, you've tried writing your own story. Uh, in fact, there's other people that try to write your own story. And, if, and it won't work out uh, exactly as you want. Uh, but I encourage you today, if you look unto Jesus and realize, Father, you're the author. Not only are you the author, you're the finisher of my faith. Uh, it's going to work out for you. Come on, somebody. Would you believe that right now? It's going to work out for you. Oh, in Jesus' name. Oh, there's going to be some things you won't understand. That's okay. And the key to life is always looking forward. For Who for the joy that was set before him, this is talking about Jesus, endured the cross. There was no joy in the cross, right? Just like we don't enjoy being crucified. Right? In case you don't, don't realize, there, there's agents of crucifixion that God allows to happen in your life so that you could give up on yourself and look unto God and rely upon Him. Amen. Everything about our life. Amen. So He endured the cross, despising the shame. But He was able to go through the cross because He looked for the joy that was set before Him. The joy. Somebody say joy. Anybody use a little joy? Do you have joy? Are you joyful? Or you wake up and you're like, it's mundane. Same thing over and over again. With the looks of some of your faces, you're there. But I want to encourage you, there's joy in the house of the Lord. God wants to give you the formula to have joy, to keep having joy, and to enjoy it every single day, every single moment when you choose it. I thought that would make you jump up and down. That's greater than the lottery. Hello, somebody. That's greater than anything you could have in this world. Don't you want to have joy? Don't you want to have be joyful when you wake up? There's joy. That, don't you want that? Don't you want that for yourself? Wouldn't that be that kind of life that you want? That when you wake up, there's joy? Some of you are like, oh, I don't know. Oh, my God, wake up. Because that's available. Or you could just continue being the way you are. It's your choice. Praise God. Man, I feel like God's going to dig deep here today. I didn't plan saying that, but there it is. But when you look ahead, what do you see in your life? You see joy, hope, peace, 
progress, prosperity, happiness, restoration, healing, or it's just work, toil, trying to make it happen. Man, my mortgage is due and I got physical problems. Or Can you see beyond that? Can, can you look into Jesus, the author, the finisher of your faith? Can you realize this life at best is temporary? You're going to live somewhere one of these days. And that's more important. Amen? I said that's more important. The older you get in years, in age, the more that becomes a reality. But see, that's, that's just an illusion. Just because you're young today in age doesn't mean you've got all your life. God could call your number. God could call your appointment today. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. And then the judgment. All of us are going to appear before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. That's why he died for us on the cross. And if you would obey the gospel, you'll have a ticket to heaven. This will be temporary. This will be at best not heaven on earth. And there's going to be something awaiting you forever. So when you wake up in the morning, what do you feel? What do you see? Because it is important what we perceive. Because what you see your life right now, whether it's truth or a lie, it becomes reality to you. Your perception is 100% your reality. So if you feel like, well, you know, I'm just nobody going nowhere. You know, just I'm Joe Schmo. Uh, I just, I, there's nothing in my life that's going good and... I'm just, you know, I'm just wandering. I'm like a leaf during the fall season that has fallen off the tree and the wind just blows my life. I go here, maybe there's joy here. Oh, I go there, maybe, you know, maybe this could satisfy me. Oh, let me try this now or let, let me try that. Can, can, I, can we put that to rest? That might bring you some level of satisfaction. Maybe it doesn't last. doesn't last, right? All the older folks say amen. Praise God. That is just the truth. Right, Brother John? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And see, you know, when you get a taste of what God offers, and you have something to compare to, then it's an easy choice. But if, if all you have and all you've ever experienced is the temporary things, then you get nothing to compare to. That's why the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord, He is good. You, you got to come and taste and see that the Lord, He is good. It's an invitation from God. It's an invitation. God is a gentleman. Amen. Oh, come and taste and see that. The, you, did you know God has a taste? Did you know you could see the things of God? Do you know that religion as a society projects is not what it is, mundane, boring? I know you've been to churches that's boring. It is not this church. The Bible started the church on the day of Pentecost. It was baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And so God has an invitation for you and I today. Oh, come and taste. And see, come on somebody, that the Lord, He is good. He is good. Hallelujah. How many of you realize God is good? Is He good all the time? Yeah? Is, is that your reality? Do you have to remind yourself that sometimes when it's not as good? Yeah? Can you honestly say, He's good all the time. Yeah? Amen. That's awesome. There's sometimes in my life that I kind of don't see that. A little blurry for me. Is that too real for you? Or was that really your perception? Even though you did say God's good all the time, that there were some times that that's a little blurry. I don't feel like that most of the time. 
I don't see that most of the time. I know it's there. I know it's truth. But I don't see it all the time. I don't feel it all the time. See, we've got to be real. I'm not going to preach to you words that, oh, yeah, well, that's awesome. And then you live, go out of this place, and you're like, well, that was good, but now here's reality. It's not so good. I don't see a lot of things that are good. See, see, the word of the Lord is real. But there's a scripture that says all things work together for the good. Together. Some say together. See, he's the author. He's also the bread of life. And in essence, we're, we're, our lives have ingredients. So it says all things work together for the good. There's a qualification for that in Jesus' name. It says, to them that love the Lord. Right? So, so think about yourself as a, uh, a cookbook. You're a recipe. Right? It's, your life has a lot of ingredients. You've got people around you. You've got your work, your job, your family, your grandkids, your vocation, your school, your investment, your you know, I mean, you should your doctor's appointment, and you, you should name it. There's a lot of ingredients, and they all they all have some 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 influence, some force asserted in your life, uh, and it's either could be good or bad or indifferent or blah, and and but all things work out for the good. So they bake cookies, right? You didn't, Abby, right? Did did you? No, he contributed. I know what, but I'm gonna believe him. So they, so they, uh, so they made cookies and handed it out. Did you taste one, Sister Lorraine? Get... Man, thank God, Sister Lorraine got. I didn't even get one, and it was my house, my gas. Hey Amen. I get that one single cook, not even a crumb, Brother JC. And when they went out, I was so excited because I was working and preparing for today. I ran downstairs. And I was, you know, I was, I was hoping there was just one. And there was none. In fact, I texted them. I said, is there one cookie left for Papa? They go, no. But think about this. Those ingredients, I'm pretty sure there's eggs, milk, you know, uh, flour, uh, if you eat any one of those, it might be good or it may not, right? The egg, if it's not cooked, if you eat it, it's disgusting. And I like eggs. I used to train. Uh, I used to be in track and field, Brother Anthony, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, I ran the marathon, track and field, shot put, discus throw, javelin, arm wrestling, amen, boxing, soccer, volleyball, basket, uh, you, you name it, I did it. And I used to drink the egg, you know, and uh, not cooking. You mix it, you put a little water, and just your protein drink. That was before, you know, all these powder protein drink. It was the real thing. It was egg, and it was disgusting. But I drank it because I knew I needed it. Think about all those ingredients. You have those in your life. Any one of them could be good or bad, but when it's all mixed together, like that cookie that I did not taste. I'm pretty sure it was delicious. Amen. So your life, God puts all things. It says, and we know. Are you convinced? And we know. Are you convinced this morning? This is the word of God. Romans chapter 8. And we know that all things work together for the good. But here's a qualification. See, you could quote this out of context and it would not apply to you because every word of God has a context and is an application. You just can't pull it out of a magic hat like in a magic trick, amen, with bunny ears rabbits and think that it's yours. Amen. By the way, good to see you, Gloria. God heal, Gloria. Good to see you in the house of God. We prayed for you. Keep praying, Sister Couchman. She's ill today and, and, and others, they're out on vacation. But you've got to love God. It will only work out for the good. Read that scripture. To them that love God. God is love. 
God wants to be loved. And he wants to love you back. But if you've got to be forced to love, it's not love. Amen. It, love is a free will choice. Amen. And we got married. And if your husband or your wife was forced to marry you, that's not love. Amen. you you got to love God with your own will. And then when you love God, you're going to realize what He loves, I love. What He wants, I begin to want. The things I once hated, Paul says, now I love. And the things I once loved, now I hate it. Amen. And then you do the purpose of God. You don't live for yourself anymore. You surrender your hopes. You surrender your dreams. Amen. Well, I don't want to surrender my dreams. Well, go ahead. Like King Kiss would say, make my day. Hallelujah. It, it's, it will only work out if you live this short temporary life for the purpose of God. Not yours. Amen? It has to be God's purpose. Because we're the body of Christ. When he says, do this and you're connected to the body, we just begin to do it. Some of the things uh, we don't understand, but we trust Him. Does anybody trust the Lord this morning in the name of Jesus Christ? Do you trust Him today in Jesus' name? So He's the author, the finisher. And you'll have joy. Amen. In Hebrews 12, verse 2. But there's some endurance involved. Amen. Who for the joy set before endured. You're going to endure the cross. You're going to, you're going to have to endure some things that you don't like. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, that's just life. You do that anyway whether you serve God or not. You endure some things. Do you enjoy your employer telling you what to do? What time to be there? When to leave? Right? If you're, you're, a, you're a kid, do, do you enjoy your parents telling you what to do? Go to sleep. Study. You're not going to do that until you finish your work. But all that's necessary, right? And so there's some endurance in the house of God when we serve the Lord. Can you make up your mind right now never to give up on God? Can you just make up your, it's half the battle when you make up your mind, I'm going to be in the house of God. I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to endure some things that I don't like. It's just called growing up. Amen. It's just growing up. So there's some endurance involved. Hallelujah. John 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. How many ought to have a quality life? A life worth living. Even a life worth dying. See, you have to stand up for something. You're going to have to believe some things. Or you're just going to be blown by the wind of every fad, every fashion. You've got to believe some things. And I want to encourage you, you've got to believe the Word of God. Because this Word is thousands of years old, yet it's still relevant because it's eternal. Things come and go. The Roman Empire, where the book of Acts was written, is no longer around. But the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ is. Every world dictator from Mussolini to Stalin to Hitler, they're gone. They're persecuted people. People that believe this Bible, but they're not around. The people that believe this word, they're still around. Hallelujah. And so you got to stand for something or you're going to fall for anything. You, at some point, you're going to draw the line and endure because as you receive from God, there's going to be people that are going to attack it. You're going to attack your experience. You're going to attack the truth of the word of God. They're going to say, well, for those of you that are filled with the Holy Ghost with the first sign of speaking another language, you're going to say, that's not real. Well, you're too late because I experience it. Right? See, you could argue with theories, but once you experience the Word of God, nobody could argue with that. They could tell you, well, you know, you were not really healed. Your, your body just healed itself. 
Well, if you experience real healing because the Word of God says so uh, and God used somebody to pray for you, they, you, they cannot argue with you. They cannot rob you of your experience. Uh, it becomes real to you. Uh, and you say, no, I'm standing for this. Uh, I'm going to endure some ridicule because I believe it and it happened to me. How many realize uh, and how many have got some things that you are holding on to uh, and no matter who agrees or disagrees, it does not really matter. Hallelujah. So there's a, a thief. The thief, that's, that's Satan. That's the world systems. That's the injustices of this world. You could protest and if that's your thing, hey, more power to you. Amen. I, I, I'd rather, I only got a limited amount of energy. I'd rather use that energy to witness to somebody and give them hope. Amen. But there's a thief that steals, kills, and destroys. That's Satan, your adversary. He hates you. He doesn't have any love for you. And you should hate him and his things. And his kingdom. We are at war with him. Amen. But greater is he, Jesus Christ, that's in us uh, than he or Satan that's in the world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and God is saying, if you uh, are on my side or will take my side, uh, you'll have life. Uh, and you're going to have abundant life. Don't you want to experience that? Abundant life. Again, how much joy do you have, really? See, most people give up on God, not because, you know, they don't believe. They're just worn out. They, they don't experience, they read scriptures like this and go, well, that's nice, but I don't have an abundant life. And they get disillusioned. Well, that's just religion. That's why most people give up on it. But see, God is a relationship. And God is an experience. God's not a vending machine. Neither is he a microwave. If you put time to get to know him, you will experience him. You will realize his word is true. Now, there's some times that you got to endure, but that's okay. Because in the end, if you endure, it will work out for the good. And see, that's really the only choice that we have. We either give up on God and try to fix it and live ourselves, or live life for ourselves, or say, you know, I tried that, done that. Amen. Don't want the t-shirt. Don't want any souvenir from hell. Praise God. I want to live for the Lord. I want to try the words and the ways of God so I could experience this for myself. In reality, not in theory. So when you read the Word of God, context is everything. Amen? Don't take one scripture and build a doctrine out of it. Or try to figure out what does this mean. Read the verses before maybe and chapters before and chapters after and you'll get the context. So this scripture, John 10.10, 10, starts actually the context in John chapter 9 verse 1 to 3. And here's the context. God healed a blind man. See, everything that happened in the Old Testament and the New Testament, because this is still Old Testament, the Gospels are still part of the Old Testament, they are an example for us. And everything that happens in the Old Testament has a spiritual application for us today. And so when he healed the blind man, because blind men, what? They cannot see. So, let's see, said the blind man to his deaf assistant. Sister Irene got it. Some of you are all wound up so tight. You didn't even, uh, a joke hit you right in the forehead. It just passed. It just went through. Your force field is so strong. Let's try it again. Let's see, said the blind man to his deaf assistant. I thought that's pretty funny. I usually say that to the CEO at work. And he's like, the first time he goes, what? I go, let's see. Because he's asking me something. Hey, can we tweak this software right here and make this work? I go, well, let's see, said the blind man to his deaf assistant. 
He looked at me like, huh? So I tried it again. He goes, <laughs> that's pretty funny, but get this to work. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. The first thing that we need healing in is our perception. This blind man was healed. You got to see beyond your problems. You got to see beyond the mundane of life. You got to see beyond all the struggles and all the opposition and everything else that churns this world, getting caught up with everything. You got to look unto Jesus. Your eyes have got to be fixed every single day. The Bible says, look up unto the hills from which cometh your help, for your help is in the name of the Lord. You got to look up. You can't look down. You're going to lose your way. You got to lift up your head. You got to look to him. He's the author. He's the finisher of your faith. And so this blind man was healed and Jesus passed by and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, now remember this is the context of John 10, 10 that you might have life more abundantly, okay? Are you with me? And Jesus asked him saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? See, their, their, their belief at that time, if you're born with, with abnormalities or handicaps, it's because of sin. Either you sinned or your parents. That was their belief. Next verse. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents. So it's not about sin, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. The Passion Translation says, Jesus answered in verse 3, Neither it happened to him so that you could watch him experience God's miracle. I don't know about you. When I read that, I had a little problem with that at the beginning. Is that okay? Is that all right? Because I, I began to think, you mean my the things that I go through is an example for somebody so that they would be encouraged because of the power of God has helped me, work through me to get through that problem? That's what it's saying. Would that be okay if I, you know, I got a central serous retinopathy, right, which God healed me, a protein leak between my cornea and my eyeball, amen? Would that be okay, maybe I'm a broken, a broken leg, but being born blind so you can see the power of God? I'm going to sign up with that. Praise God. But that's what he says. Now, either you accept that, and really, see, the Word of God challenges us if we really believe it. Before this thing is over, before God wraps this thing up and the rapture of the church happens, you and I will be truly tried, truly tested if you really believe this or not, uh, or if just some concept, some nice thing you do on a Sunday or Wednesday night. It's going to come down uh, to the wire if you're going to stand up when your life is at stake. That's what's coming. If you don't believe that, look already in, in Europe somewhere, I can't remember now, in, uh, a country that they are actually prosecuting, taking to court one of their MPs, so their, their minister, part of the government, because of her religious belief. In Canada right now, it's just a precursor. They removed the truckers. They declared uh, uh, emergency powers, which usually is just enacted during times of war. We are heading in that direction. Amen. And before this thing is wrapped up, uh, that's why the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, especially as you see the day approaching. What day is that? The coming of the Lord. It's getting closer and closer. When we gather together, we better take in what He has, uh, preparing us for what lies ahead. Uh, so when it happens, you have authority and strength to stand. Even when your life's on the line. Oh, that's never going to happen in the United States. Really? Oh, no, I, I don't know. God's not that cruel. Really? Hey, have you heard of the three Hebrew boys? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right? And what, what, what did the heathen king Oh, if you hear the sound of music, I just want you to bow down to this idol. And, and nobody, if anybody doesn't bow down, they're going to be born, burned alive. Oh, that's a just, well, nobody's going to see if I bow down, Alex. I'll just bow down and I'll repent later. 
But something came over them, which is going to be something that's going to come over us in these last days. For some reason, the infusion of the power of God came upon them and they stood up. They drew the line. We make cap baby captives in this land. This land, we're just passing through. But there are some things that are non-negotiable. There are some things I'm not going to surrender. I'm going to stand up for this even if I have to die. See, we don't think in those terms and those concepts because, you know, we're in North America. But that's the reality in the Bible. Every apostle, every, almost every believer died a cruel, painful death. Except one, John the, Bapt- uh, John the Revelator. All of Peter. The history said he was crucified upside down. John the Baptist, his head was cut off. Well, that's a cruel God. Only if you think this is heaven on earth. If you're living for this life, this would be cruel. But isn't that a... So let's say your head gets cut off, right? I don't know why I'm talking about this, but this is, this is the word of the Lord. So, Brother Kissy, let's say your, your head gets cut off and, and uh, well, you go to heaven. Or your head does not get cut off. But you go to hell. But you have the best life down here. You'll have mansions. You'll have whatever you want. Which one would you choose? Which one would you choose, Brother Kissy? Heaven? All right. Then we got a sword. You see, these things, I'm just kidding. You see, these things are just concepts. But we're getting there, folks. Our government, this this uh, emergency powers. I, I didn't know that the health department has so much authority until the pandemic. Yeah, it's amazing. And and God's going to allow us to be tested before this thing is over. Praise God. Would you pray right now? Would you just pray? That God will give you strength. That God will give you revelation. That you are being prepared right now to endure what lies ahead. And that every moment we gather together is very precious. We cannot afford to miss gathering together for any reason. In the name of Jesus Christ. That was a trial in itself. If you're going to come under the penalty of probably contracting some disease. Or some possibility of probably even dying. Amen. But when you begin to think about it. If you live for God. And God's living through you. If you die you're going to go to heaven. Are you afraid of heaven? Or you don't know what you believe. Heaven is in your terms. I want to die like this, Lord. I want to die at, I don't know, 89 years old, sleeping, accomplishing all my goals, having all the money, having a lot of people love me. That's nice, right? But what if that's not the will of God? What if you're like the blind man, so you have this, deficiency in life you've got this baggage that people have done to you and you've got this emotional baggage and you've got this physical disease even an ailment uh, but God allowed it so that one day I don't know how old this blind man was uh, but he was old enough uh, to talk uh, amen and one day he cried out to the Lord uh, and his sole purpose in life was to show others of the power of God What if that's you and me? Let me go beyond that. That is actually you and I. Your life, my life has a specific purpose to show the glory of God. Can I break to you the bad news? God is not so much concerned about your comfort and mine. You believe that? Oh, I thought, you know, he's going to add this. All these things will be added to me. Yeah, necessities, food, raiment, shelter. That's it. That's the bare minimum. 
No padded pews. No air conditioning. No light even. An outhouse. Praise God. Hey, we might have to go back to that time. I don't know. Amen. But, but there's some endurance involved. And, and, and if you're locked into what's happening right now in your life uh, and what's not happening, uh, you're going to get disillusioned uh, and you're going to give up on God thinking, poor me. Right? We've all been there. Can, can, we, can we just be honest? We've all been there. We feel like, poor me. Oh, poor me. What happened my my dog, my, my cat, my 401k, my, my health, my, my kids, my, my husband. My, if I only had a different husband, if I only had a different wife, or maybe better kids or, or a better job. If I, was a, if I was just good looking like pastor. Some of you are beginning to laugh. That's a good sign. Hopefully you're laughing at me, but that's all right. <laughs> But see, if you, if you get tunnel vision and you can't look ahead beyond what's happening or not happening, it'll be a hard road to endure. Because even the best things that happens to us, the satisfaction that you get from it does not last. Amen? Even the good things. Right? So if you live for good or bad, it's a deception. It doesn't last. So the Bible says, just keep looking ahead to Jesus. Your reward is not down here. It's on the other side. What God has for you and I is on the other side. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to keep looking unto Him beyond our problems, beyond our circumstances, and realize and believe that God is really writing our life. You're not just some leaf blowing in the wind. No, you get direction. Somebody shout, I get direction. Amen? And so this blind man, after he began to see, in verse 35, Jesus heard that because the Pharisees cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Uh, he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, uh, that I might believe him? Isn't that what happens to us when we get to the house of the Lord uh, and we get to experience him? We, we want to know more about him. We want to study who he really is. Uh, he's not a triune God. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Uh, his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, that's why everybody in the Bible was baptized in his name because the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Father's not a name. All the fathers that has kids or that you know of at least shout amen. You have a name, right? Yeah. All the sons, amen. What's your name? No, there's nobody said son. You got life in you? Jesus said, I, send, I will send the comforter which is the spirit in my name. It's when he began to see, Jesus said unto him, verse 37, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believed, and he worshipped. Everything about our life that happens to us or don't happen, it should drive us to worship. If you don't worship, you're going to get this illusion. And it's the easiest way to worship is come to the house of God. I know you can worship anywhere. But when we gather together, there's a multiplication of anointing. It's easy to worship. It's easy to lift up your hands, to dance, to shout, to run, to do the things that we think. It's not uncomfortable when we're alone. In verse 39, and Jesus said, for judgment I am coming to this world that they which see that they which see not might see and they and that they which see might be made blind and in verse 40 this is John 9:40 please and some of the pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him said to Jesus 
Are we blind also? Verse 41, Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. Everything that we hear, every revelation that God gives you, you and I are accountable to it. Once your eyes are illuminated, you can't say, well, I don't know. God once winked at ignorance, but commands everyone everywhere to repent. So every revelation you have of the Word of God, every knowledge that you have, you're accountable to it. I don't know about you, that terrifies me. Because there's another scripture that says, to whom much is given, much is will be required. And that freely you have received, freely you have to share it and give. Would you pray right now and say, Father, help me, Lord. Be really the author, the finisher of my faith, God. All the revelations that I've received, Lord, all the impartations of the Word of God, I am accountable to it eternally, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to experience abundant life, Lord. Uh, that in the process of gaining and losing things uh, that I can experience in life beyond uh, the temporary, that I can still have contentment, uh, and contentment always results in an abundant life. Abundance is not an abundance of material things. The, the Bible says, they that be rich has pierced themselves through many sorrows. If we take a poll, how many of you want to be rich? Probably all of us will lift up our hands. Right? But I want to be rich only if God wants me to be rich. But then again, you're already rich if you're a child of the king. I think last time I checked, he owns everything. The last time I checked, your heavenly Father created everything. Those that you can't see and cannot see. And that your heirs, you are, and you're about to inherit everything that your Father has. Your heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. But the problem if is you're locked into this dimension of temporariness. And you want to accumulate things. Did you know the more things you have, the more you have to maintain it? Right? Then at some point, it's like, why did I buy this car? I, I, want, I want a horse and buggy. And that thing, I just feed hay. That's why the Amish actually do that. Because, you know, there's, there's no changing in the oil. There's no filter. Just eats and comes out on the other end. Just clean up after it. Man, it's... I know it doesn't run fast. It's only one horsepower. You see, we want 400 horsepower. Right? <laughs> Amen. But see, in the process of life, you'll gain things and you'll lose things. That's just life. But when you're content, you'll have an abundant life. When you're content... Paul said, whatsoever phase I'm in in life, I, I have learned to be content. Contentment is a learning process. If you've got kids, you've got to teach them contentment. Otherwise, they'll grow up and be just be content about life and think everybody owes them something. Hallelujah. So think about this, that there are some things that happen in your life that God allows not primarily for your benefit, although you will once he answers or delivers you, but it's for somebody else. I hope that's okay with you. I hope you have to process that. Amen? Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God. Somebody say the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It's not temporary things. It's not what you eat, what you drink. That can give you only a level of satisfaction, right? It's President's Day. I think Monday, I hope all of you get the day off. You'll barbecue and eat. Amen. And when you're full, you're content. But that doesn't last forever. You, if, especially if you eat Chinese food. After an hour, you're hungry. Amen. And see, that's uh, the trick of the Chinese. Uh, they get you to come over and over again. You're, you're eating all this food, and after a couple of hours, man, I want to go back there again. They go, yeah, come on in. We'll rake your money in in Jesus' name. But it's righteousness. Someone say righteousness. Yeah. 
It's peace. Someone say peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. How many want to have some joy? How many really want to be joyful in life? When you wake up, you're joyful. You're full of joy. They look at you weird at work. What happened? Oh, I'm just happy. Oh, my middle name is happy. I'm one of the seven dwarfs happy. But there's a process to joy. You can't skip. This is not monopoly. You can't skip past Go, get, collect 200. There's a process. God gives us the process. It's righteousness. How many want righteousness? I mean, you realize your own righteousness is filthy rags before me. It's got to be His covering, His righteousness that you put on. How do you do that? You get baptized in Jesus' name. You put on Christ. They that are baptized in Christ has put on Christ. What do you put on? It's like a garment, the robe of righteousness, the Bible says. I don't have time to teach all of that, but it's there. If you got time, we'll go through it in Jesus' name. We got teachers here that can teach in Jesus' name. But you got to have righteousness. Then once you have righteousness, you'll have peace. The last day condition of the world, they will be looking for a man of peace. This world is in for a great turmoil because the antichrist will be a man of peace at the beginning the first three and a half years of his reign will be a man of peace there won't be a need for a man of peace if it's all peaceful in the world would it so you got putin in the ukraine border you get the chinese saying this coral reef is ours you know you got you got all these nations fighting against each other this is mine that's mine even in our nation there's people that, oh california needs to secede from the union or, or texas needs to secede what is that you could get caught up in all that but realize that's a spirit of the antichrist you can't be fearful about that hallelujah there's some people in our nation even in our fellowship, that they would be happy if California falls off of the map and gets drowned by the sea. They forgot we're here. Because they're looking at the political climate. Those guys are nuts over there. So there'll be a need for peace. And then, only then, can you have joy. Now this has a, a spiritual application here. Because... Joy means a phenomenon. This is the Greek word. Remember the, the New Testament is written in Greek. The, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew and Aramaic. All right. So when you study the word, go to the Greek. The word joy means a feeling or better self-perception. It means to be merry. Do you lack joy? It could be because of your past. See, righteousness deals with your past. Joy deals with your present. Excuse me, peace rather deals with your present. And joy is always about your future. It's always looking forward. Right? Because when you've got something you live for, even as little as, you know what, later, because I enjoy doing it, I'm going to change the exhaust fan in one of my bathrooms. You say, wow, that's so silly. That gives me joy. A little bit of joy. Tinkering. Because when I do that, I forget about everything. It's just, I don't want to get electrocuted. It's gonna... Then when it's done, you go, yeah, I made that work. Man, look at that. Turn it on. It's three songs. Those of you who don't know that, is how loud it is. The cubic feet per minute. It's just, right now it's loud like a helicopter. So, that, why is that? When, when you have something to look forward to, it gives you joy. It really does. But you can't get joy if you don't reconcile your past. If you look at your past, and especially if you're living in your past, your past right now has, a, has an influence over your present. You're, you're always like, I wish I did not do that. Or I wish I didn't make that mistake. And how many of you realize we all make mistakes? Well, what do you do with that? You can't go back until they invent the time machine. And even that, that's kind of weird. It affects everything in the present. So you just need to accept it. And what do you do? You need to forgive yourself. 
I said, you need to forgive yourself. And you might need to forgive somebody else that hurt you and, and spoken bad things about you. They may, not, they may not even know they offended you. They might be playing golf at Pebble Beach in Hawaii right now and, and, and swinging, you know, you know and like and just having a time in their life. And here you are, you're stewing over what they did. They're like happy. Or you could say, you know what? I forgive them. You know what Jesus said? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I think it would be a good time right now if you forgive some things. I think it would be a good time right now if you pray and you begin to forgive yourself. Even forgive others in Jesus' name. In fact, your salvation is dependent on you forgiving because Jesus said, I can't forgive you if you don't forgive those that have offended you. And some of us might need to forgive God. Why did you allow this, Lord? Like that blind man. Why? Are you kidding me? So they can see I'm healed? Pick somebody else. Pick Anthony. Isn't that what we do? Yeah, I, I'll sign them up, Lord. I believe that. I'll, I got somebody I have mind to sign up. Hallelujah. Or are you going to trust him for where you're at in your life? I realize he is love. He doesn't have love. He is love. Everything that God does is motivated by love itself because he is love. God is love. Amen. And so you either trust him with the good or the bad or you're going to get through life just looking back behind you. Would you put your past to rest right now? Would you lift up your hands and say, Father, I give you my past. I surrender my past. I forgive myself, others, and you, Lord. And would you shout right now? I promise you something. Something will happen in your spirit. Would you lift up your voice right now as your past begins to be wiped away by the blood of the Lamb? Come on, lift up your voice. I give you my past, Lord. You're going to feel better. You're going to experience the peace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise you, O oh God. Praise you, O oh God. Now, did you feel a release? Did you feel good in your soul? Now, sometimes what you surrender to God comes back. And that's just life. What do you do? Put up that slide, please. Whenever you don't lack peace, or you have something you carry in Jesus' name, you need to forgive. Praise God. And then if there's any unforgiveness, you repent, then you repent of your sins. This is a step right here. It would be a good time to take a picture of this. It will help you. Every time you're carrying something and you lack joy, what do you do? You check your spirit. Do I need to forgive somebody? Do I need to forgive myself? Do I need to forgive God for allowing the things in my life I have no control over? And after you do that, then you repent. If there's any sin in your life, you repent of that sin. Then you cast your cares. Here it is, God, both good and bad. I give it back to you. I'm not going to carry it, Lord. And God, I'm going to surrender my will. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to love you, oh Lord. Because this affects your present righteousness, peace. You'll have peace when you're okay with your present. Right? If you're not okay with your present, you need to go through this. Amen? Every time... Right now, at the present time, you lack peace. You go through this. When you've already surrendered your past, it affects your present. You're at peace wherever I'm at. Whatever I have accomplished or not accomplished, it's okay. Then you can have joy because you're looking at the future. 
It's okay if I don't accomplish everything I need to down here because my life is not dependent on this temporary world. I'm going to heaven. I don't know about you. I've made up my mind. I'm going. I'm leaving this place one day, whether death or the translation of the rapture of God. I'm going. I made up my mind in Jesus' name so I could have peace. Amen. I could have righteousness then I could be joyful today you got to always look forward always always who for the joy set before him endured the cross you'll have peace you'll have joy and it's going to be wonderful for you you'll pay 200 bucks for a psychologist to tell you this and they don't even have the power to sustain it because they don't have God. This concept they teach at school, but they doesn't last because they want to keep you coming and sitting at their couch and paying them. But here, when you receive the presence and the Spirit of God, you can have joy. How is it that the disciples were willing to die because they were not afraid? And if you're not afraid, you have peace. If you're not afraid, you have joy. Hallelujah. How is it that Paul, the apostle, was always willing to give up anything or lose anything because he was at peace where he's at and he has joy for the future. He realized, if I gain the whole world, then lose my soul I've never gained anything and so because of that you could experience victory 1 Corinthians 15 57 but thanks be to God which giveth out the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ God gives you victory you don't have to work for it you just got to receive it it's already paid for therefore my beloved brethren be steadfast and all of this have qualifications right if you read just that one scripture and don't go to the next, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to say, well, that didn't work. I don't have joy. Well, my Lord, you got to read the next verse. you got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is how you get continual victory. You're steadfast. You're unmovable. You're not wishy-washy. Amen. And you're involved in the kingdom of God. Well, I don't want to be involved. Well, be miserable. Don't have joy, peace, righteousness. Well, that's kind of harsh. I didn't write it. I just read it. You know, the Word of God is always conditional. has a context, doesn't it? Isn't that in itself a trial if you really believe it? Wouldn't it be easy if it just says, Thanks be to God, give us the victory. And period. Woo! I'd love that. What's this steadfast thing? What's this unmovable, you know, abounding? Can we just do away with that? Well, not really, because you do that at work. It's either God or mammon, right? You're steadfast, right, at work. How is it you show up at work all the time? Because you haven't conquered the habit of eating. Right? You're in abounding. You're involved in that. God's not asking something that you're not doing right now. Amen? So verse 12, verse 2, I'm heading to a close, looking at the Jesus, the author, and finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. It's always good to look forward. You got to look forward. You got to look forward. Amen. There's examples of the examples of looking forward. Acts 28, verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence. No man forbidding him. This is the last verse of the book of Acts. When Paul was under house arrest, he's looking forward. No man forbidding him. What are you talking about, Paul? Uh, you're under house arrest. Yeah, but he's looking forward. The gospel cannot be handcuffed. Joseph. Here's another guy that his life, all the trials he went through, is for us to read and go, wow, that's a great story. Yeah, that's a great story unless you're living it. Right? Remember Joseph? Joseph in the Bible was betrayed by his brothers. 
They wanted to kill him, his own family. And then thank God for one enterprising brother. If we kill him, we get nothing. Let's sell him. At least, you know, he was an entrepreneur. Let's make money off of this guy. And so he sold it to the Ishmaelites, uh, and then he was bought as a slave with Potiphar, and God was blessing him, uh, and he was doing good, uh, and she lied about him, and he goes to prison for doing good. How I many of you would check out already? Man, I thought if I did good, my life would be great. Right? Isn't that how people backslide? I thought, I thought if I serve the Lord, uh, I won't die a cruel death like, like the apostles. Well, I thought if I announced the way of the Lord, uh, like I'll be, my life would be like John the Baptist. His head was cut off, literally served in a platter. Well, I don't want to be that example for somebody else. Well, you know, that's not you. And I, we don't choose that. But let me give you hope. I know this is heavy, but Jay-Z. God won't put on you more than you can bear. Amen. I thought you'd jump up and down and run around. God won't. God promises He knows you like a child, right? God's gentle. God's loving. His kind. He's not going to allow on you more than you can handle. So if it's happening to you, you can handle it. Don't give up. See the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. And here's what Joseph uh, uh, concluded in Genesis 50 verse 20. But as for you, he's thought about his brothers that wanted to kill him. You thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. What is he saying? God allowed this. God allowed me. He, uh, God looked at you. You're evil. Uh, and he allowed you. He did not, he did not uh, get in the way for you to sell me. God, God allowed for Potiphar's wife to lie about me. God allowed for the baker and the, and, and, and the butler to lie and forget about me. And he said, he was evil. He didn't deny. You know, God doesn't expect us when bad things happen. Oh, hallelujah. What happened? Man, uh, it's just bad. I'm so thankful it's bad. You, you're dumb. God doesn't expect that. Amen. I'm sorry, I promised myself not to say that word anymore. Some of this just kind of flows out, you know. That's not wise. There you go. It's better. God doesn't expect you to say, Woo, I'm, I'm sick. Well, ah, hallelujah, I'm sick. God doesn't expect you that. Are you kidding? Do you do that to your kids when they're sick? Hey, hold on, honey. This is the most amazing thing because God's allowing you to go through this. They look at you. Get out of here. Give me some medicine. God's not an impractical God. He, he said he's touched by the feelings of our infirmities. If you, if you care for your child, how much more your heavenly father? Don't you know he cares? Don't you know he's gentle? He is love. He loves you. Hallelujah. He preserves you. But he realized God had meant it unto good to bring it to pass. And it is this day to save much people alive. Isn't that why we were saved? To be a witness? Isn't that what Acts 1 and 8 says? You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. Isn't that what our life is all about? Even if you have to suffer, even if you have to die a cruel death so you could be a witness. Did you know that Stephen was stoned to death uh, to give birth to an apostle Paul? Uh, amen. His life was that the value. Uh, his purpose in life was that for that one uh, very moment to be a witness. Are you going to be okay with that? Without the comforts in life. Without a two-door Lexus in your garage. Are you okay? Like that old song, oh, I want to be a Christian. Right? Oh, I want a two-door Lexus in my garage. Well, there's no door. To save much people. There's people that need to be saved. You are saved. To save other people. Oh, if God blesses you along the way, thank the Lord. If he adds it to you, thank God. Moses was forgotten for 40 years trying to help the people. He merged the Egyptian. He, now he's 40 years. He thought he was forgotten. Unless God said, I've allowed all this. 
so you could save the whole nation of Israel. Moses had an anger problem, right? How many of you have an anger problem? Don't raise your hand. God, you know how God deals with that? He'll let you go through a dry place. He purges it out. Make you feel like you're forgotten. But if you endure, he's going to call you like Moses. And you're going to see miraculous things in your hand. And God's going to use you mightily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want that, Lord. If that's the price, God, I'm willing, Lord, with your grace in Jesus' name. He looked ahead. Joseph looked ahead. Moses looked ahead. And here, I want to read this, Joshua 14, verse 10. And remember, Joshua and Caleb were the only ones, was it 20 and below, that lived to go to the promised land. Well, that's a cruel God. No, he just really is convinced he is God and that we need to obey his word. And Joshua 10, 14, 10, and now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. This is Caleb speaking. As he said, these 40 and 5 years since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day four score and 5 years. I'm 85 years old. And yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me as my strength was. Even so my strength now for war to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain. We, we often forget about Caleb. You know Caleb lived with a bunch of losers. They didn't want to go to the promised land. And because of their, their sin he had to wander in the desert with them for 40 years until they died. I don't know. I would not have survived. I'm probably going to pray, Lord, if, you wanna, if you're waiting for them to die, I, I, think, I think we don't have to wait 40 years. You could send an angel, or I could put something in with the heat. Let's hurry this process, God. Isn't that what we do? Right? We hurry this process. Right? And we got a problem because God has eternity. He doesn't live in our time. And so the Bible says a thousand years, one day is a thousand years, and, and, and a thousand years is a day to the Lord. And so when he says, you know what? I'll answer that today. You gotta ask him what he means. And isn't that the challenge to wait? Isn't that the challenge for all things to work out for the good? You can't check out in the middle of cooking or baking cookies, or you'll never have a cookie. I wasn't there, so I didn't get a cookie. But I was there. I was looking. Okay, like, hey, that's right there. That's mine. Even just one. Abraham looked ahead. Hebrews 11, verse 17, by faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he had received the promise offered up in his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac thy seed, shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up from the dead. He looked ahead. He was willing to sacrifice him because he knew God's able to raise him up. Whatever has seemingly surrendered to God, God is able to resurrect it. And I believe today God's promises to you. A lot of you has promises from God. He's resurrecting those in Jesus' name. And in the process of waiting, it's important what you say. Your perception, your attitude, your outlook. Is very important, or you could lose your joy. And life is not worth it without any joy. Just not. Right? You know, you wake up like, oh man, what am I gonna do? I don't know. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lay down here. Someone's been there. How many thankful God has delivered you from that? Praise God. Here's a, here's, a, here's a example of why it's so important what we say in the process of waiting or enduring. 2 Kings 4, 6. 
this Shunammite woman, her son died. And the prophet Elisha saw her from afar. Sent Gehazi, his, his servant, run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And all three times she answered, it is well. It's important as we go through all things work together for the good, what we say. Don't speak fear. Don't speak negative stuff. Don't argue with people. Just say, you know what? I believe the Lord. Uh, I believe all things will work out for the good. He is the author. He is the finisher of my faith. Uh, you could come with me if you want. Uh, you could experience what I have. Uh, but I know what I have is real. And I'm not willing to surrender it for anything uh, or anybody else. Uh, at the end of life, uh, I'm not answering to you. Neither are you answering to me. It's going to be you and God alone. Nobody there will be standing with you. You're going to give an account for your own choices, your own life. And you better choose him now. Oh, every knee will bow. Everybody one day will be forced to bow that he and confess he is Lord. But right now we all got a choice. And it's important what we say so we preserve our joy. We have peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Would you stand this morning in the name of Jesus? And as you stand, would you lift up your hands and begin to worship Him? Would you thank Him right now for the word that you have heard? Would you thank Him for peace? Would you thank Him for joy? Would you begin to speak unto the Lord uh, come on somebody God wants to hear your voice uh, he wants you to talk to him uh, because whoever you love uh, and they love you back uh, they spend time with you and they talk uh, they converse uh, you exchange ideas feelings uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, in fact that's how the infilling uh, of his spirit uh, because righteousness peace and joy is in the Holy Ghost uh, and when you're in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit of the Holy Ghost is in you, you'll have joy. You'll have peace. How do I get this joy? How do I get this Holy Ghost? The Bible says, with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, saying, this is the rest. And this is the refreshing. God will speak through you. It will not be your own language, English or Spanish or whatever your language is. It will be God speaking to you and through you. That's for you today. That's a promise to you right now. If you want this joy, would you come? Would you come to the front? If you want an overabundance of peace, would you come and say, Father, I want it. I want to get a hold of it, oh God. Lord, I surrender to you my past. And I will possess peace right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I confess, Lord, my sin. And I receive your forgiveness, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and la 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 boko sata la mahai. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, rata randa yara la 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 boko sata la mayana kasata. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What happens when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? You're going to speak another language you did not know as a child. God will speak through you. It will be your own voice. It will be your own tongue, but you're going to speak words, a language that you did not know, you did not learn. That's a supernatural sign 
that you have been filled with His joy, with His peace, with His righteousness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you build right now an atmosphere of praise, an atmosphere of faith in this house? And would you begin to speak in tongues if you've already been filled with that sign? If that's already a reality for you, God's going to pour out His Spirit. I'll pour out my Spirit upon all flesh in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's righteousness. It's peace. It's joy in the Holy Ghost. It will allow you to keep moving forward. It will allow you to keep looking forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. He andele kanda la bosita la ya randa la mokotori ande. Go ahead, speak it out. Go ahead, worship the Lord. When you pray in unknown tongue, you're building up yourself. When you pray in tongues, you're worshiping God. When you pray in tongues, hey man, God is praying through you. He ala mokotori anda la masse. Go ahead, speak. Let it flow out. Keep speaking, but don't pronounce the English. Keep speaking, but let uh, don't control your tongue. Don't worry how it sounds like. Don't worry how it sounds like. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place, in one accord, and suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire oh and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability to speak that's for you right now that's for you right now it's not complicated just speak it out God is a gentleman he was not going to force you just keep speaking and don't worry how it sounds like don't worry how it sounds like lift up your head you are worthy to receive his spirit God has counted you worthy in fact he promised it to you you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost it's a gift you don't have to work for it it's a gift you don't have to be good enough for it it's a gift oh he willingly gives it receive it in the name of Jesus Christ receive it in the name of Jesus Christ Oh, we believe right now Father we believe right now, Father. We believe right now, Father. Yea, anda la boko toranda la masata la ya. I anda la 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 boko toranda la bakasata la ba ya. Oh, I anda rana ya la 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 boko sata. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Speak it out in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak it out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let tongues flow. Let the presence of God flow. Let the Spirit of God, let joy come right now. Would you receive the joy of the Lord right now? Come on, would you let joy flow right now? It's not all just praying. It's not all just seeking. It comes with joy. Open yourself to the joy of the Lord. Open your spirit to the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It is your strength. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Let's rejoice with Daniel Lopez. He's received the Holy Ghost, uh, speaking in tongues. Uh, 
That's the first sign in the name of Jesus Christ. We've got water. You can be baptized in Jesus' name. Let's pray right now for him as God uses Brother John to teach him the Word of God and he begins to make the decision to get baptized today in Jesus' name. Would you pray right now? Father, we pray for our precious dear brother, oh God, that you have, O oh Lord, brought to us. God, somebody in his family recommended this church, oh Lord. God, his sister found us online and he's here today. He is not here by accident, Lord. There's many, no doubt, prayers prayed over him, oh God. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Oh, Somebody expect it right now. Somebody expect it that he's going to get baptized in Jesus' name. Fulfilling, completing the new birth process that Jesus himself told Nicodemus that no one is going to enter or see the heaven, the kingdom of God, except they be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Yay! I feel like there's needs in the house that God wants to complete. I feel like there's needs in this house that God wants to answer. It is the will of the Lord that you leave this place full of joy and full of hope, able to look forward to what is ahead in your life. In Jesus' name. When pastor began to preach, the Lord showed me this vision and I was really unsure of what it was because I was, I didn't know the meaning or the significance of it. But what he showed me was this little river and there are multiple little rivers. They're very skinny. They're very narrow. They're all flowing. They're flowing properly. They're all filled with water. But it was just very skinny. It was very little. And I was asking God, okay, what does that exactly mean? I was trying to figure it out. He didn't tell me what it was, but he spoke to me just now that what that vision meant is some of us have tapped into the Holy Ghost, but we've only tapped in so far to where it's just a trickle. But it could be bigger. And we could have more. And some of us are only just living off of the Holy Ghost and not thriving off of the Holy Ghost. Because there is a difference. But what God wants to do is he wants to take that little trickle of a stream and turn it into a huge river that will begin to flow volumes of joy and volumes of peace. So if you believe that word, would you just begin to lift both of your hands and would you begin to receive the flow of the Holy Ghost? You're going to feel that trickle literally turn into a huge river of the Holy Ghost. It's not just a trickle, but it will become a current of the Holy Ghost. If that is you right now, would you just begin to receive that current of the Holy Ghost, which once was just a trickle is now going to begin a current, which once was just a tiny stream is now going to be a vast river would you begin to talk in tongues right now and receive the current of the Holy Ghost that's it let the river flow let the river flow Come on, some of you need to tap into the river. Come on, that's it. Continue to speak in tongues. Come on, this is how you get joy. It's by the river. It's by the Holy Ghost. When you speak in tongues, it's like a river flowing out of you. 
Come on, would you lift him up right now? Would you begin to talk in tongues right now? Come on, let that river flow. Let that river flow. Now let's stay focused right now. Let's stay focused right now in Jesus' name. God wants to do another thing. If we could just all focus right now. Focus in Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost, I I was looking at you, Brother Allen, during the service for some reason. Don't worry, I'm not creepy. But I saw you were stretching your arm like this. Is there pain in your body right now? It went away. So praise God. There's a miracle right there. But I really feel that the Lord wants to do the miraculous in this place. So what the scripture said, so that we could see the glory of God. It's not to show off. It's not to say, oh, I'm powerful. It's so that we could give God the credence and the glory. But if you need a miracle, I wonder if you could just flood this altar. If you need a miracle, if you need healing, if it's physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, if you need healing, would you just come to this altar right now? In Jesus' name. If you need healing right now, just begin to come to the front. I feel the spirit of faith in this place. I feel the gift of faith in this place. Whatever your need is, just begin to come right now. My God. Jesus' name. Now, this is what we're going to do. I was, God began to speak to me something, and I, when he said it, I was like, wow, that is a lot. And for a second, I was, I told God, I said, how can I believe for something like that? That is so much. That is so huge. I don't know if my faith can do that, if my faith can believe for that. And then I heard the Lord speak to me, why don't you just use my faith? Because my faith can believe for anything. My faith can believe for anything and it shall be done. And so this is what we're going to do. Every one of us has faith, but God wants us to receive his faith. Because his faith is greater. And you tap into his faith when you begin to speak in tongues. Because you don't know what you're praying for. The Holy Ghost is praying. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to begin to speak in tongues and whatever need you have... You're going to receive God's faith for that miracle, for that need, for that situation. And God is going to begin to do the miraculous all over this place. And it's not just going to be your faith in operation. It's going to be God's faith that's going to begin to do the work. So all over this place, would you just begin to pray in tongues? And as you're believing for your miracle, would you just begin to receive God's faith in this place? Come on, why don't you believe for it right now? Whatever need it is, would you just begin to believe for it? And God is going to attach His faith to yours and He is going to meet the need. Father, by the authority of the Word of God and the power that is in the name of Jesus, I loose your healing and I loose your miracle upon every individual in this place according to your will. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ by the authority of the Word of God and the power that is in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle right now. Receive your miracle right now. Would you say hallelujah with the voice of triumph if you believe and receive your miracle would you shout unto God Come on, would you shout unto God? 
Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it, Brother Jay. Receive it. Receive it, Pastor. Receive it. Come on, every hand lifted. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. You don't have to ask God. He's already going to do it. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of... Come on, keep on praying. Keep on praying right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. If the pain is gone in your body, would you just begin to worship God? If the pain is gone, would you just begin to clap your hands to the Lord? There it is. Listen to that. If you said it, we believe it. Listen to that. That's God. If you said it, we believe it. And would you just worship if right you said now? It, we believe it. If you said 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 it, we believe it. If you feel that joy in this place, can you just wave your hand? Uh, feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. Come on, it's the will of God. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to switch gears. Our culture has this saying that basically the saying is what's said here stays here. But that's not the case in the church of God. What is here in this place should spill over out there. And so the miracle that you've received, you want to know why God doesn't do so many miracles sometimes for us? We don't tell anybody about it. And therefore he's not getting the glory for what he did for you. And so I wonder what would happen if this week, whatever miracle you receive from God, you testify to somebody you know, maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a friend. You testify and say, hey, God healed my back. God healed pain in my body. God healed my anxiety and my depression. He can do that for you. Because God doesn't just do miracles for you. He does it so you can tell others. And so when others hear it, they get interested and they come here and then it just repeats that cycle. And next thing you know, this whole city could hear the gospel if we would just tell people about the wonderful things God has done. And so it is the will of the Lord that when we receive a word, when we receive a miracle, when we receive a healing, that we tell people about it. You only... You only keep stuff here because it's a secret. But this is not a secret. Everybody should know about this. The Bible says that in two years, I believe, through the school of Tyrannus, all of Asia heard the gospel. In just two years. I believe it's because they were telling people of what they've experienced. They were sharing the gospel. And you may not preach Acts 2.38 right in front of them right then and there. But you could tell them about a miracle and they can't deny it because it's your miracle. You experienced it. The pain in your body, it leaving, did not lie to you. Your eyes didn't lie to you. Your, 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 what, your, what you felt in your body did not lie to you. And so whatever they think, it cannot deny the miracle that God has done. Why? Because you've experienced it. And you saw it. But I think we're going to get ready and prepare for a baptism But as we do, let's just begin to let the spirit, this joy, marinate in our heart, in our soul. Can we just thank God for what he's going to do right now? A brother that's getting baptized, we thank the Lord for them. In Jesus' name.